Hey everyone, I'm Ben Avraham here again for AE Tuts and today we're going to talk about the Sunkeys effect. So let's first have a quick preview of what we're going to be creating today. <laughs> You can even use it for lips syncing. Okay, so first of all, what is SoundKeys? Well, SoundKeys is a plugin by Trapcode which uses the data from your audio tracks and converts it to keyframes, which then you can use to animate objects on your screen. Let's uh, let's dive in, shall we? Let's create a new composition. I have already prepared a composition with uh, two audio tracks, and I'm just gonna drag it in. And I'll create a new adjustment layer, call it sound keys, and apply the sound keys effect to it. When you first apply sound keys, you don't really see anything, and that's because you need to apply an audio layer to the effect. So we'll change the audio layer from none to funky audio. And immediately you can see an equalizer emerges. Now, as in with any um, audio system, the equalizer moves from the bass through the mids to the treble. Let's first have a quick listen to see how the audio affects the sound keys plugin. Okay, so you can see the different instruments affecting the equalizer as you well expect them to do. To extract the data from the audio, we need to define for some keys which part of the audio we, we want to extract data from. And for that uh, particular purpose, we have this uh, green rectangle right here. And we, it has uh, two gripping points with which you can define the area you wish to extract keyframes from. For example, I would like to first extract the bass from this audio. Scraving on the timeline, I can see the bass is uh, centered mainly in this part right here. So I'll uh, set the green rectangle to be just around this part here. And let me just uh, scroll a bit on the timeline. I do want the green rectangle to contain all the information it can. I'm just looking for the highest point. And it seems that's just about it. Okay, great. And uh, one more thing, you do want to have just a bit of space there. On the right side of the screen, you can see a green line. And that indicates how much of the audio is uh, captured, if you will. Let me just uh, narrow that down. Okay. That looks uh, alright. So, now that I've uh, defined the area I wish to convert to keyframes, all I have to do is go to Apply and hit it. Now, if I'll hit U on the Sound Keys layer, you can see I've got keyframes. And let me just uh, switch to Graph Mode. And if I'll zoom in, you can see the wave the keyframes create, which is uh, pretty precise, as you can see. Before we continue on, I would like to indicate that there is one built-in method to extract keyframes out of a sound layer. And if you'll go to the audio layer you've got here and right-click on it, go to Keyframe Assistant and hit Convert Audio to Keyframes, it will cre automatically create a new adjustment layer called Audio Amplitude. And if we'll hit U on it, you can see it created three set of keyframes. One for the left channel, one for the right channel, and one for both channels. Now, of course, you can use these, uh, these keyframes separately or together. And it is very helpful. And sometimes you can get away with using just this uh, built-in uh, option. But the sound keys effect gives you so much more in the sense that you can use different instruments, as I did in the previous uh, preview. Before I go any further, and show you how to use these keyframes. 
I would like to show you some other features within some keys. If we'll uh, go down and in the third options, we've got the spectrum adjustment. And the spectrum adjustments refers to the equalizer right here. Now let's collapse it down and see all the different options we got here. The default option is one. And sometimes you get an audio track which has a real uh, low bass line and you can't get much out of it. So if you erase the scale values, we'll just increase the equalizer height and that way you can get more info out of it. And right now our audio track is all right, so we'll leave it at one. Smoothness just uh, levels out all the equalizer lines. As you can see, you get a real uh, smooth wavy motion out of it in cases you would like to use a larger piece of the equalizer. Comes in handy in uh, some cases. That's a uh, control Z. Okay. Now the sub bass, bass, mid and treble actually does what scale does but in a more local way. Well, scale uh, affects all the equalizer the sub bass bass mid and treble affects just the these uh, parts so sub bass will raise the sub bass bass will increase the bass with the mids and treble the middle the trebles below that we have range one range two and range three now range refers to the green rectangle which we use to define the area we want to extract keyframes from. So by default, range 1 is the one we're talking about. And range 2 and range 3 are inactive. If I would like to define another area from which I would like to extract keyframes from, I would hit this little square next to active in range 2 and immediately it will create another defining region with which I can define the area I would like to use and you can see in the output section we have uh, another green line called 2 for range 2 and if I'll hit apply once more you can see I have different set of uh, keyframes called output 2 now I don't really need that one so let's control Z and same goes for uh, range 3. Now let's go deeper inside the range uh, possibilities. Now if we'll uh, check out the inner possibilities inside the range 1, we can see we have uh, different types of range. We have average of range, peak of range, and on-off trigger. All these are pretty self-explainable. And by default, it's set to average of range, which I like to use. The second and third options are just the corners of the selection rectangle, which you can uh, use uh, using a numeric value if you would wish to do that. I personally prefer to use the visual manual way. Now, here's a very important and uh, useful part of sound keys. Let's uh, hit once more on the graph look and zoom in a bit to see what's going on here. Now this is the default outcome we got of some keys. If I'll switch the fall off from instant to linear and then hit apply again, you can see my uh, keyframes got more linear uh, shape to them. Not so much wavy as it was before. Now uh, let's uh, switch to exponential and hit apply again. And this time, I get a more smooth fall off. And right now, it might not make that much sense, but uh, once we'll uh, attach uh, some animation to these uh, keyframes, it will be a bit more uh, understandable. Let's just uh, switch it back to instant. Apply. Okay. And output minimum and maximum. Pretty understandable going from 0 to 100 you can switch it that's the default you can switch it from 0 to 1 from minus 1 to plus 1 0 to 360 or minus 180 to plus 180 works well when you're working on a circular animation and you can use also custom in which you can customize the minimum value and maximum value of your uh, animation I'm just gonna leave it with uh, output minimum maximum hit apply 
just to make sure we're on the run track. Great. And same goes for all the other ranges. That's just about it as far as the SoundKeys interface goes. Oh, one more thing, yeah. As it is with the convert to keyframes option, you can also set the channel from left, to right, or mix. So if I'll set it to left for, uh, for an example, and hit apply, all this information right now I've got here comes from the left side of my speaker. But I'm going to use the mix and hit apply again. Okay, great. So now uh, let's see how we can uh, use this data. I've already created a nice uh, composition here, which you saw in the preview. And if we'll dig in, here I've got uh, five different adjustment layers, which sound keys apply to them. With every uh, layer, I've used at least one of the outputs. In some cases, I use two or three. Of course, it's not a must, but I do like to have uh, more than one option. So, for instance, if I'll uh, unhide this one, you can see I use the three bass lines. Three different bass lines. And uh, all these uh, three uh, keyframe groups gives me a slightly different animation. So, let's uh, erase these. And hide this one. And let's see how we can use these uh, keyframes we've got here. So, now let's create a nice circle. And make sure the center point is in the center. So, okay, great. Let's move it here. Let's call this one a circle. I would like the transparency of this uh, circle to be affected by the baseline. So let's hit T to reveal the opacity and hit U on the base. And now let's alt click on the stopwatch next to the opacity and pick whip it to one of these outputs. And let's have a preview to see what we've got here. So that's pretty straightforward. The base affects the opacity of the circle. If you we'll check out the uh, percentage next to the opacity, you can see it goes from well, just about zero to well, uh, somewhere around 90%. But if I go to my sound keys uh, layer and collapse down the spectrum adjustment, Let's say I would like to lower the, the effect that the base has on the circle. There are two ways I could do that. The first one is I can uh, lower the value next to the base, let's say to 0.5, and hit apply again. So now you can see it doesn't get that high. Let's hit Ctrl Z. Okay. If you don't want to uh, mess too much with your sound keys uh, features, you can always, uh, by the end of your expression, hit uh, divide by two, and then it will pretty much give you the same effect. Okay, that's all right. Let's uh, move this one to the side, and let's see. Let's now create a rectangle. Oh, sorry. Call it a square, and now I would like to affect the rotation of my rectangle. So I've hit R, and just to make sure the center point is somewhere around the center. And let's attach it now to the guitar. So hit U, alt click on the actually this one, alt click on the stopwatch, pick with it to one of these outputs, and. Let's see how that affects it. Once again, as expected, the rectangle, the square is moving to the is rotating to the beat of the guitar. Now, uh, if I had my uh, center point not set in the center. 
let's see how that will affect my square and not saying it's bad but uh, you can use it of course but uh, just remember that uh, it's very important where you center your center point of the object and you can use it to create different animations so moving on let's create another let's uh, actually move these aside we'll just uh, scale those down okay now let's create another shape we'll create a polygon shape and move the center point sorry move the center point somewhere around the middle you know what let's leave it let's leave it here see how that works and we'll call it a poly sorry and hit S to reveal the scale and we'll attach it to the maracas at least I think it's maracas so uh, all of you musicians out there excuse me if I'm wrong so let's hit you to reveal the maracas uh, keyframes or click on the stopwatch and connect it to one of these and let's see how that uh, affects our animation okay so now let's create a new star this should be fine and hit P and we want to attach it to the bell so reveal the sound keys keyframes and I'll click on the stopwatch and pick with it to the output one and what just happened here? Well, well, it didn't work quite as we expected it to. And here's why. The position value is divided to two parts, the X and the Y. And here our expression uh, created something that we didn't really expect. To have a better understanding of what it created, uh, for a moment I'm going to create a new, uh, a new star. Actually, let's call this one star okay and for this one I'll hit P and I'll, I'll click on the stopwatch and I'll write a simple expression open brackets 640 comma 360 close brackets and nothing happened but that's because I, I told the star position by expression to set the position to the original position it was in so if I'll change this one to 540, it will move 100 pixels to the right. And if I'll change this one to 260, it will move 100 pixels up. So let's delete this one and hit U again to see this uh, the expression. Here we can see the same expression, temp comma temp. And what is temp? Well, temp equals the set of keyframes here. And right now, both the X and the Y values are connected to these keyframes. So if, uh, for instance, I'll change the X value to 640, the star will uh, then jump right to the middle. But I want the star to be in the middle of my screen. So I would say temp plus 250, for instance. And there it is, right in the middle of my screen. and still jumping up and down and so as you can see position is a bit uh, funny that way but uh, it's very easy to work around it let's create a rounded rectangle okay and let's see what haven't we covered yet we done position scale rotation opacity let's add just a glow and just and that's uh, just to show you how uh, how versatile the sound keys effect is. And let's uh, add the glow effect here. 
if I alt click on the glow intensity and pick with it to the well, I've got nothing open here, so sorry. Let's open the drums. Pick with it to one of the drums output. You can see you can even animate uh, different uh, values in uh, certain effects you would like to animate. That covers pretty much the basics in uh, in the sum keys effect. The next part of this uh, tutorial. I'm going to show you more advanced features, the likes you saw with the, the talking Pac-Man and the music video style uh, ho running horse I've created here. So until next time, my name is Lamin Avram, hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll, I'll see you on the next part.